Hello everybody, welcome to another video. My name is Infinity and today I am back with another Centro Knitting Machine tutorial. Today's tutorial is community requested. Um, I was asked actually how to do the flat panel deal on the mini version of the Centro. I hadn't thought to do that independently since I did it on the big machine. I'm doing it on the small machine now. So what you want to do, you can crank to the beginning of your row and just make sure you switch your machine from T to P alright and you can either start with a slip knot or not doesn't matter just depends on your project you guys know me I always start with a slip knot alright so what you're going to want to do is place that slip knot over your black hook your black needle and you're going to just cast on as normal so again you're cranking away from yourself and you're going behind the next needle and in front of the next one behind and front and behind and front all the way around Now, don't, like I said, in panel knitting, in panel mode, once you get to a certain point, your machine stops. So there's nothing wrong with your machine as long as it's flipped into plain knitting mode. And now that we have reached the end of our cast on row, what I like to do is give it just a light tug just to clear up any kind of slack in there. And I'm going to pop my yarn into one of the threaders down here. And now I'm going to start cranking back the other way. Now what you don't want is for these needles to have more than one uh, round of yarn on them so make sure that this white needle is not catching this yarn and the same with the black needle which typically isn't an issue. Now what I want to do here so as I am coming to catch this first white hook right here I'm gently pulling on my yarn to make sure it's a little tense because these ed these edges can get loose. And you want to make sure that first white needle catches the yarn, most definitely. And I let it sink back down in there as I crank. And then you can let it go and you can go about cranking back towards the other end. So it's just like doing it on the big machine, just a smaller scale. And again, you're going to always lose those three stitches over here. So that's where you see that my slip knot has come off my machine. That is perfectly normal. Now I'm ready to go back the other way. And those three stitches, it did not catch. And again, I'm going to kind of tug on my yarn here. You saw that <laughs> yarn tense up just a little bit. You don't want to be rough with it. And you're just going to hold it until that first needle pulls it down into the machine. And you crank back and forth. That will help your edges be neater as you crank up your rows. If you do that little step, I've noticed as a lot of people have issues with their edges being very loose or dropping stitches. Also with this machine, just like the big one, Thin four weight yarns and uh, DK weight yarns work best with this machine. Right now I am using Lion Brand's Premier Basic Stitch. This works really well in both my mini and my large Centro, so I use it quite often for uh, videos as of late. And I try to keep it in stock nowadays now that I know it's a for sure thing. So I'll leave a link to that yarn down in my description box below. And if you guys will notice, this is also a technique that I used when I did my Centro Knitting Machine scrunchies. If you guys remember back over the summer, that's another fun project that you can do with the mini version of this machine. Oops. 
and a big part of not losing stitches or um, not getting those loose ends is just just take your time at either end and crank it slowly. I'm going to continue doing this until I have a decent length swatch. I'm probably going to knit up a long enough piece of fabric to make another scrunchie so I don't waste my yarn. And you can crank as many rows as you need for your project. There is something I want to mention about the flat panel knitting. When you are working with this and you notice that there's this piece of yarn right here that goes over this pink little hurdle right here, oftentimes people end up losing stitches or making mistakes on the edges of their projects because this is laying on top of this little edge like it is now. So what I do, I make sure I'm watching for it to not do what it's supposed to do like it is now and I just go ahead and I push it underneath that ledge and I give my yarn a little tuggy tug like I normally do and I just start cranking back that way and that fixes that problem of you losing your stitches on the edge does it again so I'm just gonna push it underneath there sometimes this guy needs a little bit of help and that's okay as long as you're watching it very rarely does it on this other edge so as you can see this edge of my work is a lot cleaner than this edge I had some mishaps on this edge which I will be covering in another video <laughs> But it's okay to make mistakes on this thing. It's also understandable how frustrating it can be uh, working these flat panels. It took me a while to get a hang of it and that's why I hadn't done these videos for a long time on my channel because I wanted to make sure that I was mastering these concepts. And boy, flat panels are like the number one headache for a lot of people that use uh, knitting machines. So I'm glad to help. For me, it does this almost every time I get to that other side. As you can see, this piece of yarn went directly underneath this little hump here. But on this side, it just lays right on the edge here. And you 
don't want that. And this is why these uh, flat blanks on the center make a great uh, base for the scrunchies because you can hide those messed up edges with the sewing onto the elastic. So, yeah. Alright, I'm ready to cast off and make my scrunchie. I hope today's video was helpful for you guys. If so, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up. You can let me know how I did down below. If you have questions about this machine, I'll do my best to get to them in a timely manner. I'm still working on a couple of other videos for the central knitting machine, including one about maintenance. So stay tuned for that. If you're going to want to see that at some point, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you're interested in my other projects and whatever else is going on with Infinity Craft and Go, you can check out my other social media down below, specifically Instagram. I post there most often, so that's where you're more likely to see stuff from me. And until next time, guys, happy making.